Oh, wow. Um, so everyone, in case there's going to be people that come late, we need more place. So this is what we're going to do. It's called defragmentation. <laughs> it's the thing that's always happening at um, Falstam in Brussels. So what you do, you look to your left. If there's an open space, you're going to switch one, uh, one space to the left until there's no more open spaces. Do that now. Look to your left. If there's an open space, shift one through. <laughs> well, probably in the back it's not that important. But here, if you're in the front theater, please do. So and everybody new coming in, shift as far as you can. Don't go sit on the side. Nice. So, uh, there won't be an introduction, there will be an introduction of this um, final closing note by Jeffrey Chan McGuire. And looks like he's still busy setting it up. Um, but we are getting started pretty soon. Did you see slides now when I was uh, showing slides? And, and could you hear me when I was when I when you could see the slides as well? So I'm going to get started. Right. Good. Drupal Camp Manchester. Thank you for inviting me this year to speak. Um, unfortunately, these clever people in Vienna asked me about a week ahead of time, and I was very happy to keep that promise. I would love to come next time you do an event. It's been too long since I've been up there. Listen, uh, so Drupal Camp Manchester, meet Drupal Camp Vienna. Whee! So there were about 300 of us here this weekend, and we've had two days of sessions. I think we had 40 sessions, 
and uh, there's going to be several more days of sprinting, and it's been pretty amazing. So, I um, the original concept for this. Uh, so this is the closing session for Vienna, and then we're off to have beers. But I know that you guys have got another day of camp, so you'll be going to bed early tonight, <laughs> as one does at Drupal Camp. And um, I'm not going to be on the cam anymore. Uh, I'm going to show my slides now so that everybody can see them. I guess if um, if there's a technical problem, uh, try yelling, and then we'll see if we can fix it along the way. This is a sort of a first-time experiment for everyone here. Right. Then keynote. Okay. So. Um, I can't hear Manchester. I'm really hoping they can hear me. And uh, I've got paper notes here because uh, I can't uh, use the slides like I usually do. Um, Drupal 8 for the win. Here in, at this Drupal camp, we've had a lot of, uh, we've got a lot of really amazing contributors and a lot of really great um, sessions. And if you've had the chance to be to every session that was here, you could have learned about Twig, you could have learned about all sorts of other things that have gone into Drupal 8, but I bet that, you know, not everyone got to every session here, and I would like to just give a sort of an overview of what's going on in Drupal 8, what we have to look forward to, and also give a couple of pointers on um, what you could be looking for, where you could find more information. I have to say that the origin of these slides, I'm just checking that this is not Manchester tweeting at me that, uh, <laughs> we can't hear you, damn it. <laughs> so, Manchester, can you still hear me? I'm very paranoid about this. Manchester? Oh, terrible, okay. Uh, yes, okay, so everything I... Uh-huh. Oh, dear. Oh, that's a very bad sign. Um, uh, let's, let's try our best, and um, if this doesn't work out technically, then we'll have to figure out um, uh, how to do better next time. I'm hoping that everyone can hear me now. It's, um, I think that's going to be half the presentation is, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? <laughs> the... Original version of the original um, Angie Byron was kind enough to give me a set of slides that she's been using to talk about Drupal 8. Uh, so the majority of the material is originally from her and she very generously shared it with me to help me prepare this. Um, who hasn't heard of Angie Byron? So Angie Byron is Webchick. Webchick is one of the most uh, important, significant contributors to Drupal. She now works for Acquia um, as the Director of Community Development, and she's one of the people at Acquia who's simply paid to work on core. She works directly with Dries. Um, and uh, she was on the cover of the last paper edition of the Linux, Linux uh, magazine. Um, she's an incredible person, and um, yeah, a really, I'm um, very, very proud to have her as a colleague, actually. And um, we're lucky as a project to have someone like her um, helping us out. So this is what we're going to be having a look at today. What is Drupal? What it, what's new in Drupal 8 for four different target audiences? And when can I use it? Um, and what is Drupal is maybe just an idea, a uh, couple of ideas to help you talk about Drupal with other people. So what is Drupal? Drupal is basically three things. It's a content management system. You manage content, you manage access to it, um, and you manage how it's uh, created. It's a content management framework, and this is where it gets a little more confusing. We have all these components that we can put together to make applications and products that do a lot more than are, you know, just be a simple website. So um, it's also a kind of a, um, a box of Legos to build mm, amazing other things. And what's most important to me is that Drupal is a, is a global community of amazing, smart people, um, at, you know, motivated, changing the world, and uh, trying to do good and help each other out wherever we can. Um, so 
this is going to be amazing. <laughs> right? So we have a saying in Drupal. There's probably a module for that. In fact, you know, there's, there is always a module for that. If there's not a module, if there's not a module for that, there's probably an API for that. Um, and um, I'm quoting Angie now. Unlike other CMSs, where you choose from 14 photo gallery plugins to find the one that sucks the least, in Drupal, you build the photo gallery you want by snapping together focused components that each do one part. All through the UI, no code needed. So, um, you know, one of the nice things about Drupal through its evolution and in the last couple of versions is that for people who just want to get on with building their websites and their applications, less and less coding is required to get Drupal to do um, amazing and complex and interesting things. So we have point and click creation of data models, of content, and you know, 80% of a site or, or maybe more, depending on its complexity, can, built without, can be built without ever coding. I was talking about this in the opening session here in Vienna, but um, depending on how you slice it and dice it, um, Drupal is powering maybe something like 2% of the web. Uh, more than 1,700 people have contributed to Drupal 8 so far, which is amazing. We have more than 20,000 modules, um, about 7,500 seven and of which are compatible with Drupal 7, the current major version. Uh, we hit a million users in our community on Drupal.org a few weeks ago. It's perfectly clear to everyone here that there aren't a million active people all, you know, doing this every day. But we've got more, more than a million registrations in the website and we have more than 100,000 people being active in some way on Drupal.org. Uh, we also have uh, something like 26, 28,000 active contributors to the project. Drupal's doing a lot of amazing things like um, you know, every single Warner Brothers artist is hosted on a Drupal site. Uh, it's amazingly scalable. Uh, something like Grammy.com, which runs on Drupal, uh, saw 460 million unique uh, visitors. Uh, no, sorry, hits on the day of the Grammys. And um, I forget how many, does anybody remember how many uniques? I said it in the last presentation, I don't have it here. I think um, more than 10 million uniques and more than 460 million hits. Uh, and we're a really, really active community of amazing people who can't stop doing what we love. Okay? So, and along the way, we're, we're making the world a better place. So the Metropolitan Transit Authority that runs public transit in New York City, um, Hurricane Sandy hit and the infrastructure in the city was in great danger and a lot of people had to know if they could get around and how they should get around and how they could get to safety. And this Drupal site stayed up during the entire crisis, during the entire storm and helped people get to where they need to go and be safe. So. Um, something like that, I'm really, really proud to be a, a Drupalist when, when, when I can find out that our, you know, code is actually relevant in, in real life. Um, we're changing the way governance happens in the world. We the People is a Drupal application that's on GitHub and it's uh, just one of the repos GitHub repositories that the White House has and this is a way to, uh, for Americans to petition their government to make changes. Um, and the White House has even had hackathons now. I think that's astonishing. And I would like to think that um, since Drupal, uh, since the White House website became a Drupal website, that we were the seed of change within that government to start uh, adopting all these open source methodologies. And I'm very proud of that. Uh, during DrupalCon Portland, um, and I can quote from the newspaper article here, uh, this, this is a, a very simple looking website, but during DrupalCon Portland, uh, or the beginning of DrupalCon Portland was uh, sort of in the middle of a disaster in um, Oklahoma in the United States. There was a, a huge storm, there was a lot of damage, and um, I'll just quote here from the newspaper. Uh, More than 70 developers attending DrupalCon in Portland this week took time out to make a major contribution to the recovery effort in Oklahoma City. 24 people were killed and more than 1,000 homes were damaged or destroyed when a massive tornado swept through Moore and other Oklahoma City suburbs. 70 plus DrupalCon attendees 
teamed up with the Federal Emergency Management Agency representatives on an all-night hackathon to develop a website to assist in the recovery. The result is help for ok.org. So, you know, picture this. Here we are, everybody, we've come to DrupalCon. We're going to have, you know, get down and, and get geeky and do our, you know, have some beers with our friends and, and work on this technology. This disaster happens. More than 70 of us stayed up all night to make a piece of infrastructure to help out these people in trouble. It's another uh, real world application of our technology that I'm, I'm very, very proud to be associated with. So Drupal is um, all this code and it is an amazing bunch of people using that code to do um, important things often. So Drupal 8, what are we getting into? What, are, what can we look forward to with Drupal 8? I'm gonna talk about changes that are relevant to, as I said, for uh, target audiences, changes that are relevant to uh, end users and clients. Uh, Angie calls them the victims of Drupal. So, who loves writing their content in our wonderful forms in Drupal? So this is Drupal 7 out of the box. And um, you know, you can say that the Drupal authoring experience is now is a little rough. Um, so you find a piece of content that you want to edit and you, you want to make changes. You click the edit tab, then you get to write um, straight up HTML into these boxes with all this incredible busyness going on around it. Everything looks just as important as everything else. Um, it can be, some of the options, you know, can be really obscure for new users. And um, there's no real visual hierarchy there. There's nothing, there's no visual cue there to tell you this is an important thing, this is a less important thing. Uh, then you get the fantastic experience of hitting pre preview to see what you've just done and it doesn't look anything like the theme of your website. You get to see all your content twice, except half of it's missing, and there's a yellow background on it. Why is that? And that's in the admin theme, so, you know, hooray, this is, this is great, um, UX. Um, so, as Drupal has become less and less uh, developer focused and I mean that in a very positive way when I joined the community basically um, it was only developers and now our community is comprised of marketers and designers and business people and all sorts of non-technical people who enrich the the overall environment of the system and so it's more and more important that uh, not just us technical people know how to create content in our content management system so uh, part of this effort um, a Drupal 7 distribution called Spark was created and it was supposed to be a way to research and implement more uh, usability for content authors and the changes that were experimented with in Drupal 7 are basically being ported straight into Drupal 8 where it's going to be, you know, a fantastic new world. A lot of this you can use in Drupal 7 now if you get this, but um, the point is this stuff is coming in Drupal 8 now. Um, yeah, it is my phone. You want to take it? <laughs> so, so um, I hope it's everybody tweeting about how, you know, about this, but anyway. So, the Spark team did a bunch of research um, of about uh, uh, looking at other projects and how they do this sort of thing and what's, where could we learn from them. I, I suppose you could also call this part of the getting off the island exercises, finally realizing that, that you know, uh, there are a lot of solved problems out there and we can adopt some better practices around our own projects. So um, this is a comparison of the authoring experience in several projects and uh, <clears throat> apparently what we consider the technical strength of us compared to everyone else. Um, it's an interesting comparison, but the point is that um, it's pretty clear that uh, we have a lot of room, we have a lot of room for improvement. So what's one of the First, what's the most important, what's the single most important thing about Drupal, right? The front end. The front end. Well, I think most people and, uh, you know, did anybody participate in that? Um, so, Matt, for, Matt, for Manchester, Morton DK just yelled out, the front end is the most important thing about Drupal. If anyone, they laughed for you. If anyone... <laughs> 
If anyone here took the 2011 um, Drupal survey, I forget exactly the name, the state of Drupal survey in 2011, the top response of what is Drupal and what's important is Drupal was flexibility. So we've taken flexibility in Drupal to real extremes to the point uh, that we've never had WYSIWYG editors uh, delivered with Drupal. We've always said, well, you know, somebody might want to do this kind and somebody might want to do that thing. And, you know, you never know. If you can't impose your opinion about how to edit content on somebody else. So you better let them find all the modules on Drupal.org and learn how to download them and put them in the right folder and implement them and give themselves the permission to use it, right? And then download that other module that you need to use to configure TinyMCE because it's such a nightmare and see, but this is a much better, it, this is much more flexible, so that's got to be better, right? Um, I love this. Uh, Angie talks about putting WYSIWYG in course. She says, let's party like it's 1999. Um, it, it, so, so we've got WYSIWYG in core coming. Um, we flirted a very long time with the Aloha project, which is making an amazing editing tool. Uh, in the end, the CK editor is what's going into the core. And the um, wonderful, wonderful, interesting thing about the way that we have the CK editor implemented in core, it's completely plugged into how Drupal does everything. So if you hit the button to upload an image, you get Drupal's native image handling, um, all of Drupal's text uh, filter options are built into this, all of the security, all of the sanitization. Um, it's completely integrated into Drupal, so, so it's, a, it's actually a great experience. Um, and I do believe that you can swap it out for whatever other editor you want if you don't want that. I have seen this in the wild a few times but uh, Drupal 8 is going to be shipped with in-place editing, so you'll be able to click on an awful lot of things in the front end and make changes to your content that will then be reflected everywhere. Um, and that's, uh, however they're displayed, you're gonna be able to edit the things where they are. Um, and that's a pretty huge uh, advance to the point that um, there's been a lot of talk about taking out that admin overlay that everyone was 100% in love with in Drupal 7, right? Uh, there's gonna be a new content creation page and it's gonna be a lot less busy and it's gonna be, you know, so this design here says, you gotta write a title, you gotta write a body, and there's all these other options that are put away. Um, if you need to change them, you can change them and if you don't need to, you within, um, you know, basically, as they used to say, above the line, you can already save that and publish it. Um, Drupal 8 core is going to include a draft state for content, if I'm not mistaken. Can anybody, can, has that been committed? Anyone? Anyone? No. Bueller? No, it hasn't been committed. Wow. We're hoping to commit it. <laughs> okay, so it would be nice. Um, there is an effort to put real content previews into Drupal 8 that would, you know, that really look like the front end of your site. Um, I got these slides from Angie a couple of weeks ago. Has this made it in? Okay, so this slide that says in progress, real previews are now in Drupal 8 core. Hooray for that. That's a great step forward. Um, another fantastic uh, advance for Drupal 8 is this multi-device world that we're in where, you know, next year we're probably going to have to put the Oculus Rift and the Google Glass and I don't know what else, the Apple iWatch on this slide, we don't know yet. Um, so mobile is, is, is actually multi-device now. Now, who's run a Drupal 7 site on a mobile device? It's a joy to work with because you have the choice of, you know, a lot, a lot of scrolling, or, you know, if you have a lot of menu points, they end up covering up your whole screen, and, um, you know, wow. So, this is what mobile looks like in Drupal 8. Here's the front end. Um, so, in Drupal 8, um, all the core themes are responsive, and all images except inline images in your text content are, um, also responsive, and um, so, and Jesse Beach, especially a lot of people, but especially Jesse did a really, really wonderful job of taking the admin theme in Drupal 8 and making it incredibly useful 
on a mobile device. So there's a couple things to point out here. One is that we finally um, have agreed to use some icons. So you see on the left uh, mobile device there that there are actually icons for the menu points that allows us a much compacter menu structure. Uh, and on the right, what you see is an example of what I believe is called a smart table. Basically, you can prioritize the columns in a table to say, when I hit this responsive breakpoint, and if my table is therefore too wide, drop this column first, drop that column next, and then at a certain point you can also specify columns that will never be, never be dropped from the display. So that's, that's really, really cool. That's really, really helpful. And not sure if in progress or realized by now, but um, in the real preview functionality, uh, it's, there's also going to be a mobile, mobile preview so that you can test those breakpoints and um, responsive tables and all the rest of it. So, <clears throat> so fantastic for, for multiple devices, fantastic for the, the mobile device world. Um, I do know that we have hit the point where an anonymous user hitting the front page of a Drupal site should now have no, no JavaScript loaded at all. I think that that's all been committed. Um, basically, there's, there's a ton of uh, optimization going into this huge performance hit that um, the front end of a site will give you. So, so um, front end performance is being looked at a lot. That's pretty great. Now, changes for everybody in the trenches, you know, the people who, who get all that work done in Drupal and, uh, you know, make lovely, lovely websites for the world. Um, so we have a whole bunch of new entity types and we have a whole bunch of new fields and they do a couple of really cool things along the way. I'm going to show that in a second, but um, the, uh, the data model in the back end has been unified a lot. Um, the, um, so Yves Chedemois is here somewhere this weekend and uh, he gave a fantastic presentation about uh, the unification that's going on around entities in the back end and if you, uh, once that's online, if there's a video of that, I can highly recommend seeing that. The query builder that we've had on basically every Drupal site of any size since Drupal 5 is now finally in core and um, here in Vienna, who doesn't know what views is? Okay, this is, this is easy then. So um, this thing to make tools and tables and lists and select content in all sorts of wonderful ways is now built in to Drupal 8 core. I went to an amazing session here in Vienna given by Gaber Hoichi, who's been the lead on the Drupal 8 multilingual initiative. I can highly, highly, highly recommend checking out a recording of that. If there isn't one, or if it's not easy to find, he's promised to do a, um, a live Google Hangout with me in the next month or two to go over that material. Um, it's not quite true, but um, basically at this point with the patches that have been committed, almost everything is translatable in Drupal and you can do some really, really, really fantastic things that have never been possible before. You can install Drupal from the get-go in another language. You don't have to have anything in English. You don't have to have uh, English in your system in any way. You can install all the translations from the localization server um, through the UI of your Drupal site so you don't have to have server access. Um, so that's actually pretty great for security and for letting site administrators do more without your help on the back end. Uh, there's been a ton of usability improvements that have gone into it and everything that's an entity is translatable. This is the je suis un chat slide. Um, but um, there's a ton um, there's a, a ton of amazing changes that have happened in the, in the translation space and, and Gabor really um, talked as fast as he could basically for an hour here in his session and it was really, really astonishing. So I want to make sure that, um, um, like I said, he's going to do a hangout with me about that and I want to make sure that, uh, that you can find out more because I think especially in Europe that's, that's very, very important. Now, for everyone in Manchester, I'm not able to see the notes on my slides and I printed out very carefully on paper all of the notes so that I could go through this and it turns out that the printer ran out of paper in the middle of my session. <laughs> so, we'll see what we can see. So, 
Morton, the most important part of Drupal. Yeah. <laughs> Changes for designers and front-end developers. Um, well, Drupal's output is now all HTML5, and that lets us do some really cool things with some of these um, field and entity types that we've got. Like, if you say, you know, this is a telephone number, your site knows to, on a mobile device, to display the phone keyboard instead of the alphabetical keyboard. That's a fantastic advance. We've imported a whole ton of amazing front-end libraries to let us do m uh, more beautiful, more interesting, more performant uh, websites. I highly recommend looking online to find a recording of Morton talking about how Twig got into Drupal and how it works. It's really, really amazing. But anyone who's familiar with PHP template, uh, compare it to this node html.twig. Um, so this is uh, like, um, you know, your node tipple PHP file. Um, basically, anything in double brackets means print it. Anything in brackets and percentage signs means do it. And anything with brackets and hashes is a comment. And that's how you build a template. It's, it's fantastic. Morton, as I said, has a fantastic session. He's also promised to do a live hangout with me about it in the next month or two. So I'm really looking forward to uh, going through that material in a lot more detail. Um, by the way, anything that has to do with the Symphony project, so all of the components that we've adopted, plus the Twig um, templating system, which, which, is a, which is a Sensio Labs project as well, they have incredible documentation. So anything that you don't understand, anything that you want to look to, um, the Symphony documentation is, is, is magnificent. So thanks Morton and Jen Lampton for getting Twig into Drupal 8 core. Um, I'll just pause at this second. We have a lot of really uh, heavy hitters in the con uh, uh, core and other c uh, contribution spaces here in Vienna, and I don't have funny pictures of all of you. Um, I didn't have time to find that, so um, please don't feel offended. Thank you all. Um, Klausi, your module's coming up very soon, and I didn't have time to get your picture in there. So anyway. Right. Who's excited about the semantic web? Hooray! So um, we're going to get semantic uh, schema.org compliant um, RDFA out of Drupal 8 sites. This is really, really cool for making the search experience of the future. Um, uh, so between that and unique content IDs, we'll be able to do all sorts of new mashups across federated networks of sites. Um, so this is, this is my weakest area, and I lost all my notes. So here we go. <laughs> Ah, yes, Drupal 8 is completely restful inside and out. So now with a lot of work and uh, you can make, a, you can use Drupal 7 as the backend for an app and a website and use it, uh, you know, to, to ingest and put out web services. Now that it will be natively restful, um, this is going to be a lot easier and there's very going to be very standardized ways to do it. So. Um, Klausi, thanks for this module. Um, and I think um, I just, this is a snapshot from today. So the module's in and it's working, but online documentation, not done. Theming guide, not done. Oh, yeah? Okay. I mean, not done, but Okay. <laughs> so for Manchester. <laughs> so for Manchester, uh, Klausi, the developer of the REST module, is here in the audience. He said, actually, the documentation is there, but it's not done, whatever that means. Um, uh, but this is a great example of an incredibly, an incredibly useful module that's going to make a difference for uh, uh, thousands and thousands of, of, of projects. Um, and it's a great spot where if someone understands this and has some time, it's a great uh, place to jump in and contribute. And there are spots like this all throughout uh, the V8 space. There are lots and lots of opportunities for people to get in and, and help get the thing out the door. Um, hey. Oh, this is a great way to contribute. <laughs> Who recognizes, see, I, I, I do, I am that, I am a, in the technical enough. Who recognizes what that code at the bottom is? Not Klaus, because you know. Right, so um, actually, isn't it 
Right. So, um, in any case, everything, if I understood the documentation right, um, is <laughs> correct. I, um, I have been wrong so many times before. It's no, it's no problem. Um, I can also export, I can also shoot views out through the REST module, right? So, yes. So, I think that's kind of amazing. So, we can actually do all of our Drupal content mashup madness and export it as a web service. I'm, I think that's pretty cool. Um, I've been doing a lot of podcasts. Um, I talk with a bunch of people at Pro in, in Prague, and basically every single person who I ask, what are you most excited about in Drupal 8? Um, they say, CMI, 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 CMI. So this is how um, content and configuration, this is how content and configuration used to be set up in uh, Drupal data, well, I mean, still is in Drupal 7 in the database. This is very, very carefully assembled so that it's absolutely impossible to pull apart. And um, now, there was a, the, the CMI initiative made it so that content and the, 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 the first idea was, oh, we need to be able to stage content in Drupal, which because of the decisions made in the database was very, very tough. Um, so content staging is something that grown up uh, software projects have been able to do for a long time. Um, but, and, and there's a little, there's a quick technical demo of, of, of how this happens now, but because of the ways that were chosen to, to implement this, we've got a, a sort of a whole brave new world of, of things that I think are, go way beyond just being able to stage content. Uh, for example, all of the configuration of your website um, is saved as files. What can we do with files? Well, we can save them in version control. And since we're saving configuration in files, uh, we can version control our configuration and our content, and we can move it all around between sites. So I'm exporting this, uh, this, this uh, set of configuration into my staging thing. Um, then I've got a, a, a configuration management menu point in there. Here's all my changes, and since we're all coders, we can look at the diff, see exactly what's been changed. We can decide that's okay or not. Um, if we accept it, we import them, they get into the Active Directory, and we're there, and our sites uh, configuration and or content, we can update all of this. So this, this, this decoupling of all these different things allows an amazing flexibility of work processes and uh, networks of sites and so. Um, and we config get, config import, config this. This is all already uh, ready for you in Drush when you start working in Drupal 8. Ah uh, yes, getting off the island. So, um, you know, we should be very, very proud of how much we've accomplished as a project and, and all of the ingenious ways that we've solved a lot of um, problems in the web space, but we have been guilty of creating our own very idiomatic solutions for things at times, and um, the not invented here mentality, Angie very, very handily turned that around into being the proudly invented elsewhere mentality. Drupal 8 is, has moved to object orientation. Uh, so we're coding like the grown-ups now. And um, so, and um, I will give a, a, a shameless plug. My podcast, which I'm releasing uh, next Wednesday, is uh, the second half of my conversation with Yched, with Yves Ched Demois, uh, when we go over about um, where the added complexity goes into learning the OO uh, paradigm, um, but also the advantages that we get out the back of learning how that works, and plus the unification of work that he's done in the back end means, for example, um, all of the CRUD operations on any entity in any system are, are, are already the same. And um, I believe there are 21 entity types roughly in Drupal 7, and they mostly all have their own individual beautiful ways of doing that. So I figure um, if you learn the one way to do it in the new OO paradigm um, and you just get it right, you've probably saved, um, what was that whole discussion this morning? 190 times means 19... So anyway, I think that you will save a lot of time and effort um, having only one you know, set of CRUD uh, 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 concepts to learn. Um, Oh yes, so PSR zero namespaces, this is all uh, going towards making our code a lot more compatible with other PHP projects using Composer, all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, plus, we are I I involving a lot more 
external libraries and ah, who's heard of this? Right. So we've taken a whole bunch of really important components from the Symphony 2 framework and um, instead of, uh, you know, instead of re reinventing uh, HTTP request routing and all that stuff, we're taking it, we're open sourcing our open source project, okay? So we get a lot of advantages from this. First of all, we get to make a bunch of new friends uh, in the open source world, um, but we get a lot more eyes on our code which means that we get more security, we get more creativity, and because people consider us more relevant in the broader PHP world, actually the innovative, crazy, interesting things that we are doing are given a lot more credence and a lot more validity in other projects, so I think we have a chance now to be more, more relevant, uh, uh, more listened to in the broader open source community. Um, Friedrich Bedke, are you here? Oh, there you are, sorry. So, and as proof that this is working, uh, the Sensio Labs Germany technical evangelist, Friedrich Bedke, is here with us in Vienna and gave his very, very first Drupal camp session ever. Welcome to the Drupal community. A round of applause for Friedrich, please. Two weeks ago, I was at my first symphony community event in Berlin, and um, I had a great time too. So I think that um, I think this is the beginning of a lot more cooperation, a lot more interesting uh, uh, expansions, and and you know bridges between our island and all the other islands out there. Um, if you want to check out what's going on in Drupal 8, uh, you can have a look at this list of changes. Oh, okay. So now I remember what section three was. Um, who loves it when, when Dries and Angie say, who loves it when Dries and Angie say this? There are no hands up in Vienna. Um, yeah, this is also really cute. Um, this timeline, this timeline also said Drupal 8.0 release projected for DrupalCon Prague 2013. So, um, you know, there's all this stuff going on. There's all these huge changes happening. Um, I... The, the, most, uh, the most recent conversation I had with Angie, um, she's saying we really, really want to get it out the door in spring. Um, so, I don't know, let's see, who, no. So Daniel Kudwein is shaking his head, uh, Kudwein, very, he's shaking his head very slowly and dark, a dark shadow just passed across the room. So I'm gonna, <laughs> um, Let's say everybody's hoping to have this out the door by DrupalCon Austin because there is so much good in here, um, you know. On the other hand, I have the almost latest version of Head on my local machine and I've been playing with it and it's really, really cool and there's a lot of stuff going on in, um, it, it, it really, really works already, and I want to get to that point in a second for all of you module maintainers. Um, yeah, so it gets released when, oh, those circles are in the wrong place, um, you know, when we have zero critical issues, and um, when you get a release candidate that didn't add new criticals, and um, yeah, hoping for uh, early to mid-2014, yeah, okay, very nice. <laughs> yeah, so, so here's this timeline. Um, um, you know, of when you might want to be starting to use Drupal 8. Uh, clearly, if it's major client projects, uh, you need to wait a while. Um, I had a great conversation with Rick DeBoer in Prague, and then again recently online, and um, he's a real advocate for quality in the contrib module space, and um, he is very, very strongly encouraging module maintainers to upgrade to Drupal 8 now if you possibly can. And there are two or three really, really great reasons to upgrade your module now. On the one hand, there's a new a set of pro programming paradigms that you need to wrap your heads around in Drupal 8, and upgrading your own modules is, uh, is a great place to start figuring that out. Um, the second point is that the core team still has a lot of bugs to work out, and if there are still bugs hidden that we don't know about that are exposed by your particular module, you upgrading your module and discovering that will help delay the release of Drupal. I mean, uh, you, you, you're, you're exposing that bug will help us make Drupal 8 
better. So, um, so there's, a, there's a couple of good reasons to actually really start looking at, at releasing your, um, at upgrading your modules to Drupal 8 right now. Um, Rick would also, he also put, um, says that, you know, people upgrading their modules now um, en masse, so if a lot of people do it, um, it'll also send a sign that our community is strong and healthy and that we're ready to move forward into this new uh, space. So, so um, I think that's uh, also legitimate and it's certainly his personal request on anyone in the audience who maintains a module. Um, thank you to the more than 1,700 people who have contributed to Drupal 8 so far. That's at least 100 more since, uh, than since we were in Prague, so that's pretty cool. Um, if you want to help out, you can go to this URL and um, see what you can find to do. That guy has a pretty awesome mustache, I have to say. <laughs> so so um, at this juncture, um, Manchester, we can't see you, but um, please, everyone in the room in Manchester who's contributed to Drupal 8, please stand up and then someone tell me roughly how many people are standing up. Okay, so they're, they're clapping. How, can, can, somebody tell me, can somebody tell me how many that is? All right, so now um, about 20 people in Manchester stood up. Can everybody here in Vienna who, nobody clap. Everybody here in Vienna who's contributed to Drupal 8, can you please stand up as well? Come on. Wait, no, wait, stop, no clapping. So I'd say that we have maybe 20, 30 as well. So now, um, to all of you, um, especially those whose funny photo didn't make it into my presentation, thank you so much for your help. It's an incredible effort. Thank you in Manchester, thank you in Vienna. Everybody, please, let's give a round of applause for our contributors. Uh, uh, thanks again to Angie Byron for helping me out with this presentation. Um, one more thing, that we're in this uh, legendary, in not at all tacky uh, month of fundraising. I, my family is personally uh, affected by, by um, uh, prostate cancer this year, which is an unhappy situation to be in, but it does make me a little keen, a little keener to, to collect donations um, to fight this. So if anyone um, is able to make a donation to prostate cancer and to tes testicular cancer research, um, mm, I'm on the US Drupal team. Um, that's my personal URL for me. Um, whether you donate to me or my team or someone else who's in the effort, uh, please consider donating. I think it's really, really important. And um, thanks again for listening to me, Manchester. I hope to see you the next time around. Vienna, thank you for inviting me. And thanks a lot, everyone. Take care.